I had the pleasure of presenting the final results of the progression-free survival analysis of the Alpine study as a late-breaking abstract at ASH this year. Now, the Alpine study is a head-to-head -head trial comparing xanabrutinib to abrutinib in CLL patients. Abrutinib, as you know, is the first-in-class BTK inhibitor approved some time ago for CLL. And xanabrutinib is a next-generation BTK inhibitor, which was designed to be more specific for BTK. And then it also has another property. In addition to being a covalent inhibitor of BTK, it maintains drug levels throughout the dosing interval so that if BTK is resynthesized, there's xanabrutinib around to inhibit it. And as a result of these properties, BTK occupancy is very, very high with xanabrutinib. So uh, based on this rationale, it was hypothesized that xanabrutinib would be potentially more efficacious and safer than abrutinib, and hence this study was performed. But well, as I mentioned, it was a phase three randomized trial. It was open label. Patients with relapse refractory CLL, more or less all comers, were eligible for enrollment. They had to have measurable lymphadenopathy. It turned out to be a fairly representative relapse population with a median age of 67 to 8 and a median of one prior therapy, which was chemoimmunotherapy in most cases. And the, the randomization was stratified by age, geography, refractory disease status, and deletion 17P. And then treatment was until progression or intolerable toxicity. And the primary endpoint was actually overall response rate to find this partial and complete response. And there was an interim and final analysis of overall response rate previously where non-inferiority was established and then superiority was established. So this was an event-triggered analysis of progression-free survival as a key secondary endpoint at the time that 205 events were observed. The data cutoff was August of 2022. The key finding is that xanabrutinib improves progression-free survival compared to abrutinib with a hazard ratio of 0.65 and a median follow-up of about 30 months. The two-year landmark difference in progression-free survival was 79% with xanabrutinib compared to 67% with abrutinib, so a 12% difference. And in a pre-planned analysis, we also looked at the highest risk 17 p-deleted patients, and their two-year landmark was actually 22% improved by xanabrutinib, which was 78% with xanabrutinib versus 55% with abrutinib. So those results are extremely significant, but in addition, xanabrutinib was also safer. There were fewer serious adverse events, fewer adverse events leading to treatment discontinuation or dose holds, fewer adverse events leading to discontinuation. And there were quite many fewer cardiac events, fewer cardiac serious adverse events, only one cardiac event leading to discontinuation on xanabrutinib compared to 14 with abrutinib, and no cardiac deaths with xanabrutinib compared to six with abrutinib, which was 1.9%. So xanabrutinib was both more effective and safer than abrutinib. These results, as I said, establish that xanabrutinib is both more effective and safer than abrutinib, so it should really be the drug of choice over abrutinib. I don't, if you have access to xanabrutinib, I would certainly choose it over abrutinib in all cases. The calabrutinib is also a next generation inhibitor, so also safer than abrutinib. In the head to head study, calabrutinib did not demonstrate superiority, however. So we'll never have comparisons between a calibrutinib or xanabrutinib, yeah. but uh, a calibrutinib would also be a reasonable choice, but doesn't have this level of data compared to a brutinib. Mm -hmm.